Okay, my number five. We're getting into the top five. The cream of the crop, if you will. Yeah. Um, we, we talk about how Brock Lesnar is a legitimate badass. Yeah. Because he made the crossover to other organizations, different sports, and he, and he succeeded. Well, speaking of that, my number five is kind of similar to that. He's the first guy to do so. The m world's most dangerous man... Ken Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Oh, Ken damn it. Why Shamrock. Why did I not think of that? One of the original godfathers of the UFC, man. No, he was the godfather of UFC. Yeah. Him oh. and Dan the Beast Severin. Uh, I was, yeah. Dan the Beast Severin, uh, uh, Gracie. Who? Uh, great, uh, Gracie? Uh, the Gracie? The, 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 the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like, Martial artist. Oh, what the hell is his name? Boys Gracie. Uh, I still have no idea who that is. Oh man, <laughs> I'm not that big of a UFC guy. I All I know are the the big guys like Cain Velasquez, Brock Lesnar, and and yep. the old guys like Chuck Liddell and um, Dan oh, yeah, Severn, Tito Ortiz, I guess. Understandable. Understandable. So um, yeah, Ken Shamrock. He was in the corporation. He was. Um, should have been a world champion at least once. I think he was, he was more than ready. I think he should have won it at least once. He had an awesome feud with The Rock. The Rock, yeah. yeah. And, and I, mankind too. Yeah. And sometime Before. in the future, I hope we do this. He received one of the best fucking chair shots I have ever seen in my life when The Rock cracked him over the fucking skull on Raw. <laughs> Top ten chair shots. <laughs> yeah, Ken Shamrock. Oh, I'm so pissed I forgot about him. How could you? I don't know. I'm How ass. could you? I'm an ass. Honestly. Um, but he's, he was ass. a legitimate badass. He Hell could yeah, beat he the is. crap out of anybody. He could wrestle anybody. And, um, yeah. He should have been a world champion at least once. So, yeah. That's why the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, is my number five. Mambo, no number five, Mambo number five. I'm sorry? Mambo number five. You mentioned him earlier in your uh, honorable mentions. One of the greatest heels ever. Mr. Wonderful, Paul Allendorf. Yes. And I'm going to give out a big motherfucking fuck you to the fans who were at the arena in, uh, what, was it, what, what was that area? Portland, Oregon. Yeah, Oregon. Boring sons of bitches. They, he comes out, you know, he's got the mustache, he's got that look like he always had, Mr. Wonderful. And they're just like, wait, who is this guy? I'm like, you kiss my ass. Do some do some fucking research on this guy, because he is one of the true, he, he's one of the most hated heels ever. Mm -hmm. Again, when, you know, we had the feud with Hogan. And it would have been nice if Hogan put him over. Uh... But unfortunately, it didn't. But that's my number five, one of the best heels ever, Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orton. Okay. My number four is uh, somebody you already mentioned, and I don't think it was your honorable mentions. I think it was earlier in the top ten. Mm -hmm. Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. Yep. And I think there are. Multiple reasons why he should have been a world champion. Um, his legacy. Oh yeah. <laughs> look at where his fam. Look at where his, where his family lies. Yeah. <laughs> Owen Hart, Bret Hart, himself. Jim the Anvil. <laughs> Jim the Anvil. And um, he was a part of one of the best tag teams of all time. British Bulldogs with uh, uh, the Dynamite Kid. Dynamite Kid who. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> did, he, did he die yet? Is he dead? No. No. Well, let's say his domestic uh, behavior. He did a <laughs> oh, bad. <laughs> he did a <laughs> um, but yeah, though, I think he should have been a world champion at least once. He had the look. He had the charisma. He had the freaking muscles. That's uh, man. Was, what the hell are you thinking? He, now was he just freaking massive? That dude could. He was agile. Shit. I think. I think um, he should have beat Brad at least once. No, he did beat Brad Hart. Oh, you mean for, for the, the world title? title. Oh! For the yeah, title. That would have been cool. If, you know. 
Yeah, the 95 Royal Rumble. <laughs> Shawn Michaels and British Bulldog were the first two entrances. This is where... Oh, that's the, right. Well, this is where each each mm -hmm. chip comes out every 60 seconds rather than 90 seconds or two minutes. You know, it depends on how they do it. And they were the last two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, good old Davey Boy Good Smith. old Davey Boy Smith from jolly old England. That's why he is my number four. I believe you might have this on your list as well. I've seen this on a lot of people's lists, and I can totally agree. Let's just say his quote means truth. Everybody's got a price. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, John Cena, take notes. This is how you do a promo, okay? <laughs> this dude had an awesome gimmick and he sold it man he sold it like anybody nobody oh, could oh my god he had virgil as his you know his uh, assistant <laughs> uh you know he was tag team money incorporated uh and he was huge during wrestlemania 4 you know when the title went you know when the title vacated remember because andre the giant i was i was just like no he should have dropped the belt to the million dollar man be honest yeah he should have he should have and I'm so happy that Macho Man won it at four because I love Macho Man, dude. He was awesome. But Million Dollar Man should have had his, you know, his time to shine. But then again, he did have the Million Dollar Championship, though. He never leaves home without it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, and it's funny because you know what he does now? I think he's a minister now. He is, um, I think he is. Yeah, it's kind of weird, really. But, yeah, and if you saw Mer at the, uh, the... The uh, Hall of Fame, man, he still got it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And how can you not forget the Million Dollar Dream? Oh. Number four, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. My number three, number three, is um, one of the most underrated superstars of all time. And if he would have stayed clean, I think he would have been an awesome world champion. I'm, of course, talking about the bad guy, Scott Hall. Oh, boy! Scott Hall. <laughs> um, Razor Ramon, and we're not talking about that fake bullshit. We're talking about the Razor Ramon. The Razor Ramon, Ramon and Scott Hall in WCW. Yes. I'm talking about the guy who was, that was reminiscent to Tony Montana right That's right, there. that guy right there. Yeah. Tony right, Montana. Right there. Tony Montana. Hey. What are you doing at Tony Montana? I take your fucking bullets. <laughs> I bury those cockroaches. Oh, what was so great about Razor Ramon is that, you know, he was like an anti-hero. He were, was. He was one of the original anti-heroes that you just want to cheer for. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, everybody I, loves Scarface. Oh, yeah. It, uh, wasn't it one of the promos of Razor Ramon where there's like someone on the by the fountain, he just flips him over, gives in his wife. Get out of here. <laughs> you just laugh at him, uh, I hate, I, you know, it sounds like a, a bad, you know, broken record, but you want to know how to throw a punch? Fuck, boy, fucking head. Fucking head. Ray's Romano, Scott Hall, threw the greatest fucking punches. He did. That he had a, he had great snap to him, and it looked like it hurt, and he was so agile for his size. He was like a six, he was six foot seven, 290 pound man. He had one of the most unique finishers, the Ray's Razor's did. Edge. The man. Razor's Edge, where he... Yep, Do it and, like a power bomb and and another thing, Kevin Nash Diesel as WWE champion. No, it should have been fucking Razor Ramon. Man. I think they should have split it both ways. Yeah. But Diesel. Diesel Diesel was okay, I guess. He was okay, but Razor Ramon was, you know, I will say this: Kevin Nash has swagger. Mm -hmm. He's got some swagger too. Not him. as much as swagger as Scott Hall, though. No. Nowhere, nowhere clear, swag. nowhere close to Scott Hall in uh, terms of swag. Um, yeah, that's why the bad guy, Scott Hall, if he would have stayed clean, he would have been a world champion in WCW. Yeah, I yeah. guarantee you that. You know? And guarantee you, know you that. He's an honest dude. He'll admit that he, you know, he was troublesome. But, you know, I'm so glad he's in the Hall of Fame, dude. Stick with your son. demon, or stay with none of the demons. So, that's why yeah. the bad guy. Scott Hall is my number three. My number three, you 
mentioned him earlier, and we pretty much covered this guy. Let's just say he is the hot rod. Rowdy Roddy Piper. You change the answers, but I always change the questions. <laughs> Takes that fucking coconut and cracks it over um, Superfly's head. <laughs> Nobody throws rocks at a guy who's got a machine gun. <laughs> um, hey, Duke, yeah, you wonder where Duke Nukem got his quote? I'm here to chew bubble gum. Kick and ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm yep. all out of gum. Yep, Roddy Piper and um, the John Carpenter movie. They live. They live, thank you. <laughs> Rowdy, Roddy. Put Piper. the glasses on! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. One of the best fight scenes of all time. Oh my god, it's so ridiculous that you have to watch it. And I, the Schmoes know about Rowdy Roddy Piper. Ask Josh the intern. That's all I will say. <laughs> Wait, the whitest Schmoes you know? The Schmoes, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, the whitest Schmoes you know. <laughs> I know, I know. Just, that's, that's my nickname for him. <laughs> yeah, Josh the intern. Yeah, just ask him about Rowdy Roddy Piper. That's all you have to say. What, did he get the coconut in the head? No, um, it was a prank, you know, and Ryder right, right Piper slapped the shit out of him. <laughs> it was awesome. And, you know, Ryder right, right Piper was getting pissed and everything, and it was all a prank. And John Santrum was scared, man. <laughs> it was awesome. Wow. Yeah. But Roddy Piper was in the joke and everything, too, because he's been on the podcast, on their Schmoes podcast a couple of times. Awesome, man. Awesome, awesome. That's great. Yeah, Roddy Piper, number three. Number two, you already mentioned him a little earlier, because let's face it, everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> that menacing laugh. Oh, my God. I just Virgil. Wipe the dog crap off my shoe. It's because of this. And he shows all the dollar bills. <laughs> I want you to bark like a dog and I will give you money. Rough, rough. <laughs> <laughs> Was he on the, um, um, the Rich and Famous? The Wild Lifestyles Lee? of the Rich and the Famous? He was on that. Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. I'm Robin Leach, host of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> you know that guy? And <laughs> Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> I think Macho Man was on there too as the Macho yeah, King. <laughs> the Macho King. Macho King. Um, but yeah, Teddy Biasi should have won. He had the gimmick. He had the best gimmick, like you said. Oh, what a great he guy. ran with it, and he ran with that gimmick. He he went all out. They they gave him the they gave him the bucks. They gave him the jets. They gave him the cash. They hit, had him sit in first class all the freaking time, and he should have been world champion at least once. He had the gimmick. He had everything, he had the style, the charisma, the look, the moveset. Especially, especially during 1988. Exactly. He should, he should have won it around that time. Yep. Exactly. And like you said, he should have, he shouldn't have lost to Andre. No, or, like, excuse me, lost, Hogan no, should have, Hogan should have, um. He should have jawed the DiBiase. Yeah. He should have put over Ted DiBiase. Mm -hmm. Putting people over. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, bogghead. <laughs> Take well, example. Hey, I will say this, Hogan, he still did business. You know, fuck boy, you know, fuck boy, bucket head, this guy, he never does. And when he does, he comes up with an excuse. Oh, my elbow hurts. Oh, I was oh, not feeling my, it. My shoulder, my shoulder and my elbow, it was injured. I feel like crying. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, um, that million dollar championship, though, that was pretty awesome. That was awesome. I always That's wanted one of those. I always want to get one of those. Um, so yeah, that's why the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, is my number two. My number two.